Tammy says, hi, Jess and Lane. I'm struggling at the moment. I feel my daughter doesn't listen and just does what she wants all the time. I try to do gentle parenting, but I'm finding it increasingly difficult. Mm. Any tips on dealing with a strong-willed 2.4-year-old? I'm sure you've seen many strong-willed 2.4-year-olds. I think almost all 2.4-year-olds are pretty strong-willed, at least in some area of their life. That makes sense to me. That is a nice, big, broad question. Absolutely just want to start with a lot of affirmation that life with a 2.4-year-old is so, so complex Mm -hmm. because they are such complex beings going through such a complicated internal change. So it's hard because these are people who are like volatile and and vibrant and full Mm -hmm. of color. And some of those colors are like bright, hot red. And some of those colors are like gray stonewalling you. Mm -hmm. They're just like so full. Because it's like the beginning of them even being able to understand that they're separate from you. Am I Mm -hmm. right? And like they can push back and then look and be like, are you still there? Yeah. So the strong will might actually, I mean, I'm sure there's variations of strong will in toddlers, Mm -hmm. but it might actually be a quality of a toddler is to have a strong will that pushes back against the parent, right? Yes. To have a will at all has just, just begun for her. Mm -hmm. She's just emerged as a person who knows that she exists and she's not the same as you. She just spent all of that like late one-year-old and early two-year-old making super sure that you're a person and that she's a person and kind of exploring the distance there. Like how far away can I get from you before I get scared? Because actually I'm still small and I want to come back. And how hard can I crash back into you to see if we'll like reabsorb into being the same person? What's the distance and where are the edges? Hmm. So you're now at two and a half in a very where are the edges moment. she feels confident that she's real and that there is space and now it's like it's almost like she's running her hands along the edge of life Mm -hmm. and finding out like what's soft and what's rough and what Mm -hmm. moves when you push on it and what stays really hard and if i push on it again will it stay really hard or will oh that one budged oh my gosh now Mm -hmm. i have to restart this cycle of experimentation to find out like will it push further now that that one has moved maybe i'll circle back to all the other things and see if any of those will move again how interesting very scientific process yeah what she's really doing is developing a self. She's trying to like fine tune what it means that she has a self and that you have a self. And that's the case for kind of like all beings now. She's like, well, that one's over there and this one's over here and that one's shaped this way and this one's shaped that Mm -hmm. way, both like literally and like metaphorically shaped. Mm -hmm. Um, But you, mom, Tammy, are for sure receiving the brunt of it because you're her origin space. You're her constant, Mm -hmm. the thing that's absolutely always there. And um, because you're also a person, you are also a variable. So sometimes when she comes, you do one thing. And sometimes when she comes, you do another. And that's just because you're a person. And sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no. And she just is endlessly exploring kind of what that cycle means, kind of filling up her stockpiles of like person data in the background. You can't have a will Mm -hmm. if you're not a separate person. So this is really her first opportunity to find out like, what does it mean that I'm a force in the world? And um, gentle parenting can mean a lot of things. I know that there are some like very particular term, like there are Mm -hmm. definitions for that term in particular that is a style, but then also I think that people use it kind of colloquially and I don't know which one of the ways you mean it. Um, I don't know a super ton about it as like a system. I've always just kind of been like, I'm going to just like take that as it sounds. Yeah. But what I know about the word gentle is that it does not mean not firm you can be both gentle and firm. And so I want to encourage you that there is space for you, Tammy, to sort of firm up with Mm. this child and practice showing her where the edges are because that's kind of her big question for you is like, where's the line? And by the line, I don't mean like the line you can never cross. Mm -hmm. I just mean like literally the boundary line. Mm -hmm. Like our most basic boundary is our skin right? Like you can't pass through my skin. If mm-hmm. you do, there's damage and blood comes out and things have it's like, a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. Um, and so she just like is actually even fundamentally understanding like I have skin. What's so loud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you showing her where the edges are is you teaching her about human boundaries and human life because there is an edge. Mm-hmm. And what a toddler really actually wants is to find it. Mm-hmm. They want you 
to be sort of the proverbial sea cliff that they can kind of crash their waves against that never moves. Mm -hmm. That's actually where a feeling of real safety comes from. Because if you are the thing that is supposed to show them where the edge is and you never do and they, they can't find sort of like the boundary space mm -hmm. out in the world, it ends up leaving a person kind of psychologically feeling like a, a sort of a drift anxious yeah, anxious yeah. because we we know and we can feel that we're not actually the most powerful being in the universe mm -hmm. we don't want to be right we want to be protected and we mm -hmm. want to know we want to have an organization to life and know mm -hmm. where this goes and where that goes and where i belong and what belongs to me and what belongs to you mm -hmm. like we're looking for separations between this and that because that's a world that has order yeah and safety yeah so showing her this is where the edge is and it will not move in yeah. the places where it's important that the edge doesn't move is actually going to provide her with a lot of safety. Mm -hmm. And I'm not telling you that it won't cause a reaction because it certainly will. Mm -hmm. It certainly will. But surviving those big reactions and being with her and attuning to her in those and not moving the line mm -hmm. is long term the process that's going to teach her how to be an, an organized and powerful person who knows where her power is and where other people's power is and respects both of those. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I, I am just coming, so I have a three-year-old, which means I just passed this stage that Tammy's in, and I have an almost two-year-old who is approaching this and her strong will is coming out. Uh, I don't know what gentle parenting is in the way that Tammy knows it either. I know what I've heard, so similar to you. I know that there's extremes um, of it, I believe, that like doesn't believe in saying no. Right. And I can just tell you, I say no to my children. I don't know. Did you say no Absolutely. to you, the kids you worked with? Often, okay. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think the way that I view it is that it's really helpful and good in the way you're describing it creates a safety. It helps them understand how to use this amazing strong will in the way that is good um, mm -hmm. because you know they can grow up to be amazing leaders and people who love really well. And are good listeners and understand where where no leads to the right things. Mm -hmm. And if we're not showing them a no now, I think the world's going to be really surprising. Yes. <laughs> I have to tell you about a tantrum that happened this week. I cannot Because wait. while it was happening, I was like, no, but I really don't know what to do. Oh, and no. I really feel escalated. And I'm thinking uh, your words like an escalated parent cannot de-escalate an escalated toddler crushed it right crushed okay. it. <laughs> basically when you're feeling like this and they're feeling like this uh -huh. um oh yeah if you're just listening audio wise you can't see what i'm doing with my body but they you get it, it you know the like, feeling you know yeah okay so jules she wanted to wear a robe after the bath mm -hmm. so i gave her the robe <laughs> and then she started crying really hard that she didn't want the robe. So I removed the robe. <laughs> <laughs> and then she wanted it again, uh -huh. put it right back on her, and the crying never stopped. <laughs> and it was this huge tantrum. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, girlfriend. I am lost. Aww. And then just to top it all off, because this is a detail worth noting, it was like the, the chaos moment. I was like, why do you smell like poop? <laughs> Why, Jules, do you smell like poop? You no. just got out of the bath. She was in the bath because she smelled like poop because she had a poop <laughs> problem. And then I realized I was smeared <laughs> with oh, poop. My whole no. arm had her poop in it. So is that, that was the real moment where I'm like, hold on, you're freaking out. I'm doing everything you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who smells like poop. <laughs> Like, shouldn't I be crying? <laughs> yes. And I don't really know what worked. Nothing really. We just mm -hmm. waited. I like tried to console her, finished with some food and was like, all right, off to bed. Maybe you're just exhausted. Yeah. Clear, some, some, clear the poop. From yeah. Yourself. I did change my shirt. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. That's so intense, Jess. Yeah. And some of it is like the indignity. You know, you're standing there and someone's screaming at you and there's poop on you and you're just yeah. like, I'm a full human adult woman person. Like, mm -hmm. how can this be what's happening to me? Yeah. I once had a two-year-old run past me. I was like seated with my arm on the side of a chair on the playground and this child ran past me and wiped their nose fully across my arm, like wow. took two hands to like... <laughs> Wipe their face across me Yikes. like a tissue Yikes. without breaking stride. Whoa. They didn't slow down. 
they just used me <laughs> like wow. a tissue and carried on. And I just was like, had this like slime smear, just yeah. staring at this smear of slime. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's it's disgusting. It's so undignified. <laughs> Oh, the thing of turning to and flipping over your peas mm-hmm. is so real and so specific. And I spend a lot of time being like, milestones are flexible. Everybody's mm-hmm. brain develops at its own pace. Like it's literally just like your body is growing and mm-hmm. with it, your soul and self and person and don't, you know, they're, they're like helpful ish and mm-hmm. don't worry about it. When you turn to, it's like on the day. It it's was like on one the of day. the only things yeah, and I don't know wild. why it's a mystery. It seems almost spiritual. Yeah, it's wild. And there is a sleep regression that sometimes comes with turning too. So mm-hmm. I find that, I mean, definitely for me, that was real. And I looked it up and it's a real thing. It's like they're developing so much that they will either start fighting naps or they wake up a lot in the night or mm-hmm. they don't want to go to bed at night. They maybe were sleeping good and then suddenly they don't. So you've got a child who's developing so much and they're underslept for mm-hmm. a few days, maybe a couple weeks. Oh my gosh. Oh my it's gosh. Wild. It's a lot for you to deal with. It's a lot for them to deal with. This is like a big old new like they're waking up to a whole new world, whole mm. new self, whole new existence. Yeah. Um, I kind of think about it like actually that Pixar movie from a few years ago, Inside Out. Did you yeah, see that yeah, one? Yeah. They did such a good job of it's like from the perspective of being inside of a little child's brain and all the characters are emotions. Mm -hmm. And as the child grows up, there's basically like a big old switchboard. And when they're little, there's just like one big button that the emotions all push. Mm -hmm. But as she grows, the switchboard becomes infinitely more complex. Mm -hmm. By the time she's like 12, it's like knobs and levers. There's like Mm -hmm. hundreds of them everywhere. And I thought that was, they did such a good job of illustrating the idea of brain development. Yeah. Like from the perspective of a child, when you just like wake up in the morning and you have like a whole new switchboard of social tools, like, Mm. whoa, it's a big deal. Yeah. So not only are we just see them from the outside and are like, oh, you can do so much more stuff. They're on the inside being like, oh my God, the whole world Mm. is different. Like everything I see is way more complicated and, and everything I have impact on stuff. And it's, it's like big and scary. It's super exciting. Mm -hmm. Like they're stoked. Yeah. A lot of them wake up with suddenly like 50 new words. I know. What is all this language? You've been just hiding this language from me? This morning, Jules came in with a pen (gasps) and said, daddy, can I have a piece of paper? The full sentence. And we were like, what it was as if Eloise had just asked it which I think she just learned the sentence from Eloise but yeah that's it she just wanted a piece of paper to draw I'm like okay two is going really well (laughs) yeah out pops all these words Uh it was amazing these thoughts are like matter to them now yeah right. everything used to just be like wow big splashy feeling and now it's like I have a thought and I want you to know about it yeah whoa yeah they're like offering this thing to you which is so sweet you're getting to know them better I do love that about two With Wilson, because he just went through two, I was thinking this is one of my favorite ages because I'm getting to discover what's inside of them. When they're Mm -hmm. so little, you're kind of figuring it out, but they're just, they're not telling you about stuff. Yeah. At two, you're hearing it. The thought is becoming a sentence Mm -hmm. and wow, that's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a sentence that like belongs to them Mm -hmm. where that other stuff was all still just happening to them. Mm -hmm. And they're still very much in a world as two-year-olds of things happening to them. Their Mm -hmm. feelings happen to them and their experience is just like, whoa, how'd it cut? Like they're not over and in control or like around it. Sure. Still, it's all still very experimental. We've talked in a lot of places Mm -hmm. about toddlers as little scientists Mm -hmm. who babies come into this world like pre-wired to discover all that there is, just like learn Mm -hmm. about whatever exists in this world and they have no data and they're just on this voracious hunt for finding out like, what does that feel like? And what does that taste like? Mm -hmm. And if you push on it and what happens and and who's that and what's that and what what am I? And this is sticky and I hate that, but also this is sticky and I want to, put it every, oh, just like everywhere. the uh-huh. wild exploring yeah so you still have that happening in your two-year-old they just are like it's like an embodied process mm-hmm. now now they know that they are the scientist mm-hmm. and that they exist instead of it just being this like weird consciousness that's like walking around bumping into things now they're like me mm-hmm. so then what are you and what is yeah. this and they're like in charge of it yes. for the very first time I don't know where that thought was going, but yeah. that's no, the that's exciting real. thing about that. For me, for me talking to you about all of this stuff, what I find to be very helpful is that it gives me perspective so that when I'm inside of the moment mm-hmm. and I'm responding as the grown up who loves these children very much, but I also am not but 
And I am thinking about everything it takes to keep our day flowing. Yes. I have a job as well. So I'm thinking about these things. So sometimes them being little explorers isn't what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking they're little mess makers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to be Ob insensitive. Obstacles. Yeah, yeah. We both are viewing each other as obstacles mm -hmm. when I'm not in touch with these thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, okay, well, shoot, I'm trying to get out of the house, but they have chosen to remove all of the laundry from their their little drawers yeah. and pile it here. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Nope, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, but when I reframe it, they're exploring. Mm -hmm. Even if I still am saying, no, guys, that's not what we do with our clothes. There's like a compassion that takes over or an understanding, a patience that's a lot easier to tap into mm -hmm. when I'm understanding what is going on in their world yeah. versus me, my agenda, these little guys, the way they slow my agenda down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even this week when I just, I had the two of them by myself, one of the things I was realizing again is how slow toddlers walk. Oh, gosh. I'm like, okay, we just have to get from the park to the car. That's really all. It shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Not very far. It's amazing how long it takes. Yeah. And so when I am just, okay, I'm on my mission. We just got to get to the car. Then I'm really easily agitated mm -hmm. by, why are you stopping to gather rocks? Like, oh, Wilson is peeing? Okay, well, I guess Goody's not peeing in his pants, but like that's someone's house. He just peed right outside. You know, you're thinking all these things. Yeah. But if I can slow down, be like, okay, these are these are little buddies. They're mm -hmm. just my little people who are trying to understand this world and I do need to speed them along. It's, right. it's not that they get to run my whole life, mm -hmm. but there is a give and take of like, when can I give them opportunities to really explore? And when can I give them opportunity to understand that mom has some stuff we have to do mm -hmm. as a team? This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Yeah. It's it's tricky. I want to kind of hone in on like the two-year-old thing. Mm -hmm. Like all that toddler stuff has already sort of happened. Yes. And now basically you're we're dropping in at like year two. Mm -hmm. You now know that you're a person and that you're a separate person from yeah. Me. Mm -hmm. And so like, what does it mean? You toddler, mm. you two year olds, mm -hmm. like, who are you then? Yes. So now what they're testing and what they're exploring is a little bit less like, how do I use my legs? What does everything feel like in my mouth? Like how do, how do my hands function? Okay. And a little bit more like, what are you and what am I? Yeah. And what am I in charge of? And what are you in charge of? Like, mm -hmm. what effect can I have on my world? That's really good. So now they're out just like testing the environment, right? Okay. How long can it take me to get hmm. to the car before she loses her ever-loving mind? Mm. Is is a real test that this child is running. And it's not because she hates mm. you and wants you to be mad. It's because she doesn't really know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I need to tell you that what she did was <laughs> we had to cross a street. Uh oh. I have drinks that I'm holding in my mm -hmm. hand, mine and theirs. Mm -hmm. uh, Wilson is in front of me. Jules, I'm holding like holding her hand sorry not holding her in my body yet yet and as we are walking she plops <gasps> down in the middle of the street oh no. wilson is now walking by himself so i've got three-year-old up ahead of me oh. which to me i'm like this is actually terrifying because cars can just turn right you know and he's just a little guy yeah so I like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, Wilson, come back. Jules, come on. And she's, <laughs> she's just sitting like, what's exactly the explorer that you're describing? Oh. Like, what will happen yeah. if I sit here? And Why like, is this the most exciting ah, place yeah. for me to be? <laughs> I've never sat in the middle of the road before. <laughs> so I like quick scoop her up, spilling the drinks, which just adds to the drama and the escalation in mm -hmm. my body. Wilson ends up running back. So we don't cross the street. We go back to the side that we started. And I'm like waving the cars like, we'll try next Sorry. time. No, yeah, it's like, you this go. Is, I don't care. I'm not going to get to my car today. It's fine. So many of us, when we're inside it day to day, our mind is like, we just survive this. Yeah. But when I talk to you, when I hang out with you outside of this, you connect adulthood to toddlerhood. So you, mm -hmm. you've you said, even this week, we were talking about a situation with a, a woman in her mid-30s. And you were like, oh, interesting. You can actually trace that behavior back to your toddler years. And if you have this experience, then that is what happens. And when you say stuff like that, I'm, it reminds me that the work I'm doing raising toddlers mm -hmm. is not just surviving days and cleaning messes and yeah. trying not to yell. It's building something really beautiful and healthy and important mm -hmm. um, in them. I So I almost would declare the idea of shared power as like the theme of the two-year-old year. Okay. Like what is this child learning this year? And it's like how power functions. Okay. So ultimately 
Jules is going to grow up. She's going to turn 18. She's going to be given 100% freedom Mm. and power over her whole own life. Mm -hmm. She can make whatever choices she'd like in the eyes of society. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we're hoping that she has practiced Mm. using choices, using her freedom, using power Mm -hmm. in like age appropriate ways throughout her life so that when she gets there, she's like, oh, thank you. Yes, that does belong to me. And I somewhat know what to do with it. You know, like then Mm -hmm. young adulthood happens. But sure. Yeah. Yeah. um, As opposed to a child who has either never been allowed to use any of their own power. And Mm -hmm. so now they get out into the world and are like, "Ah." Mm -hmm. um, or a child who has always had sort of all the power Mm -hmm. and that person too then is uninhibited and Mm -hmm. scared kind of in their own way Mm -hmm. of like, well, there's nothing out in here to protect me anyways. And there never has been. And, and each of those young people is, um, like, not, not as embodied well. or powerful. Yeah. Like their power doesn't live inside their body in the mm-hmm. way that we would optimally hope for. Sure. So you've got these two-year-olds and they're like, give me power. But then if you do, they're like, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> There's too many choices. I yeah. don't know what to do. And so you're kind of on this like swinging spectrum with them all the time where like there's a microcosm of that every minute okay. of like they're like give me the power I actually I hate it put my robe on no I don't I didn't I don't like it. it yeah I want something is yeah. what she said I want something mm-hmm. that's I, that's yeah. actually a thing they say right yes uh-huh. I had a there was a child in my classroom who was like just the most charming little person in the world and okay. when he wanted when he got into that state, he'd sit there and cry and he'd be like, I need something. <laughs> he'd be like, what do you need, buddy? I have something. Oh, <laughs> just, just like yeah. that feeling of something's not right. Yeah, but I don't know what it and is. I don't know mm-hmm. what it is. So the the frustrating but hopefully useful answer is that like actually a, a lot of tantrum prevention and a lot of that kind of stuff happens in the the before. Okay. So knowing like you are going to get up tomorrow Mm -hmm. and Jules is going to want something. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) She's not going to know what that something is. She's two. Yeah. Her life experiences are little, but the feelings are right there, like full size feelings in these little pint sized tiny bodies. Yes. Um, And so knowing like I got, I got this person who I'm trying to train toward this thing, Mm -hmm. which is you do have power Mm -hmm. over some parts of your life. Mm -hmm. Let me think about places in her life tomorrow where she can have power. Mm -hmm. And also, you are not in charge here. Actually, I'm in charge here, which Mm -hmm. is good for you Mm -hmm. and ultimately feels good for you, Mm -hmm. child, Mm -hmm. because you know that you're not supposed to be in charge. That's scary. Yeah. Um, So having a mindset that says, like, what are the appropriate ways that I can be letting this child practice power? Yes. So as many choices as are reasonable, Mm -hmm. whenever it's suitable for you, right? I think two-year-olds should have two options. Mm -hmm. Would you like the red cup or the blue? Hey, Mm. will you smell these two cups for me and tell me which cup you think smells better? Mm. Do you like, does the blue cup smell good or does Mm -hmm. the red cup smell good? Mm -hmm. It's all, all the same. Everything's the same. (laughs) Um, Two options that are both good for you. Okay. The adult. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, The idea kind of being like, I'm going to let you know where this journey is going. Mm -hmm. And here are all the ways that you get to be in charge along the way. Mm -hmm. We are going to the grocery store. Would you like to bring this with you or this with you? Yeah. In the car, would you like to listen to a story or would you like to talk about your day? Yeah. Like anywhere that you can weave in, like I'm in charge of the direction. Yes. It, It is my agenda because I'm the only one here with perspective. Sure. Along the way, yeah. how would you like to carry your shoes or put your shoes on? Okay. I always want to be putting the frustration or like the inconvenience uh-huh. when I can back into the lap of the child. Okay. Saying like, I've laid out some really good choices for you. This is how my family and my day is going today. Come along and pick your favorites. Oh, you don't want to? That's okay. We're all going to go have lunch over here. We're okay. right here. Okay. Come, come along. Mm-hmm. Food is such an easy way for children to grasp onto some control. Mm. So actually when people bring to me the problem of like, my child is really controlling about eating. One of my first things is to circle back and be like, why don't you try to introduce some levels of control in their life Mm. in other ways that are useful to you. And hopefully that will just like massage open that little hand that's so tightly clenched around the food. Like what, what would be a good example of introducing control um like the two options okay in other ways Mm -hmm. okay just in other areas of your life and your dynamic with them yeah okay like where are some places that you can demonstrate like they Mm. can really see you handing some power back to them okay um 
even if it's things like they're dragging around a blanket that you're like, oh, I really didn't want that to get dirty. And she's like, I don't mind it being dirty, being like, mm, perfect. Okay, great. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah. If that feels good to you, that, then I'm all right with that. Yeah. When you're done, will you let me know so I can put it up? Cause I don't really love it on the floor. Sure. Just like, so hand, you're kind like, of picking your battles there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But even just like not having them be a battle, yeah. like really only choosing the things that are actually very important to you. Okay. Um, because if you're in a world where you're just like constantly trying to like clip this child to, to stay inside of like mm-hmm. arbitrary rules, mm-hmm. it's very unpleasant for you and it's very unpleasant for them. Oh gosh, so Everybody exhausting. feels frustrated yeah. all day long. Okay. And there totally are things that they've got to do. Tons yeah. of them. Okay. Tons of them. Um, but if you can just like look through your life to prune yeah. all the unnecessary instructions, mm-hmm. just like ha- even having your own voice stop happening mm-hmm. that many times a day can so soothe you it really <laughs> and does. just like calm the dynamic so much. What are practical ways to connect and calm your toddler during these moments when both children are needing and demanding mama's attention and body? It's a pattern in my house of calm, sweetness, and sunshine, and then boom, chaos. And she has a little baby and a toddler. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And I would wager that those tantrums are happening at that moment, not just like, ah, and it's very inconvenient, but because it's very inconvenient. Sure. I think that probably what you're experiencing is a person who is like in this cool new power dynamic for them where they're like, whoa, look at how distracted or involved or unavailable this mom is. And either there's a feeling of like, well, now I need something because you can't give it to me. Or there's just this thing of like, well, what happens if I, this, Mm. like, let me just like throw some glitter into this dynamic and get really spicy about it. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I'm so sorry that that's happening. That's so tough. That's just a lot to manage, especially with somebody new in your house too. Mm -hmm. And then this little toddler acting in this new way. Um, I would try to notice which times of day that's happening. It's almost definitely at like nap time for the baby, Mm -hmm. almost definitely when you're making meals, Mm -hmm. right? These transition moments. So Mm -hmm. transitions are big for two-year-olds. Okay. The change from whatever was happening before to whatever is happening next. Even if I like the before thing and I like the after thing, Mm -hmm. there's just something about those like bridge points in a day that two-year-olds are really predictably just like they don't want to shift from the one thing to another. Um, So that's you're getting in the car. Mm -hmm. That's your... uh, someone just came over and now Mm -hmm. all of a sudden they've freaked out you that you were all playing on the floor and it was lovely and now you've stood up to make dinner Mm -hmm. just like any of those change moments there's gonna just be this little spike yeah Mm -hmm. yeah makes sense yeah and some of it might just be the feeling of like the attention was here and now it's there Mm. but if you can anticipate like something i'm gonna shift something in our day here or i'm gonna i'm gonna be unavailable in a moment and just try to remember like put a little flag in that for yourself that says i need to think about something to make sure that this toddler has what she needs while I just quickly Mm -hmm. go do this thing. Mm -hmm. Something that acknowledges the transition. Sometimes it's as simple as like, hey, this is what's going to happen next in your day. And um, it may feel okay to you and it may not feel okay to you. I am going to get up and go make our dinner Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be right here and I'm going to let you be on the floor. I got you this thing and this thing. Is there anything else you want? Mm. Oh, great. I'd love to grab that for you. And then like mean mean what you say and go ahead and just make dinner. Mm -hmm. And if she's upset, use your lovely voice to be there next to her while you make dinner saying, I'm right here next to you. I got you some stuff. Absolutely. You, what you can do Mm -hmm. is go grab that thing for yourself. What you can do is come be right next to me. If you'd like, Mm -hmm. would you like a couple of kisses? Come over here. Oh no, I actually can't come to you right now because I'm making dinner for our family. But if you want to just come right over here, I'm here for you. Yeah. And like really allowing if it turns into a tantrum to let it be that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry that the noise is so loud. It's I so know. tough. It's I so have tough. a mom, one of the moms in our calls, she is amazing, a mom of multiple kids. And she said that she'll put in headphones sometimes. The child's there, they're safe. Mm-hmm. But she said the noise gets too intense in sure. her body where she's like, I'm sorry, you're safe. Everyone's fine. Yeah. In order for me to make dinner and not freak out, there's going to be something else playing in my ears. And Absolutely. I thought that was pretty beautiful. Like to know that about yourself and be able to do that. And obviously the kids are safe. Yeah. Um, if that doesn't impair your ability yeah, to be there for them, right. and it does make your experience 
a little bit calmer. Mm-hmm. Lovely. What a lovely like personal yeah. adaptation I, I, that she um, has. In moments that are super stressful with the kids, I started playing really calming music in the mm-hmm. background. I felt like maybe it would help set the tone for, mm-hmm. you know, when you're hearing relaxing music, your body kind of relaxes. Sure. So I'm hoping that's happening. And so far it seems fine. I mean, yeah. at certain points, if it would get really chaotic, I would just have to turn off any music so sure. that too much noise wasn't yeah. making me crazy. But, but something yeah. that tells your children, I know that this is a time mm-hmm. where our emotions might get heightened. I actually anticipated that. Mm-hmm. And this is what I've done. Mm-hmm. Like that whole, your demeanor in that tells yeah. them like, I'm the one in charge of this environment. I've got you. I thought about really you. Good. I also thought about me because I'm here too. Mm-hmm. And I'm a person. Mm-hmm. So anything you can do like that in anticipation of like a transition's about to happen or anything that the toddler can be included in that it, they're not going to destroy. Yeah. You know, um, I'm going to be making pasta tonight. I'm going to lay out these little pieces of pasta for you. Will you break all of those up for me and k- make sure that you put them into these little jars? Not that you're going to use really that good. pasta, but that she's doing Something the same thing do. that you're doing. Yeah, that's super good. I need to change the baby. Will you be in charge of opening these little tabbies? Yeah. The Velcro on diapers, mm. the number of tantrums that I've been like, okay, don't be a landmine about the mm. fact that we're going to change you right now. Can you just like stretch this diaper out for me? Open the little tabbies, That's listen smart. to the way that they crack open yeah. that keeps the toddler involved in an appropriate way mm-hmm. in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because it's I most of those things are about the having to transition or the feeling excluded or mm-hmm. like they've lost attention, which uh, they reasonably have <laughs> because sure, your yeah. attention has to go a lot of places. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but that's, That's probably why that's happening at the worst moments possible because she can tell that it's going to be the worst moments possible. But if you can sort of like be bigger than that situation Mm -hmm. and kind of show her, I've anticipated that our life is going to take a little shift and I thought about you in these ways. You're Mm -hmm. either included or this is what I've provided for you. And then um, as long as everything is safe, I would not stop what you're doing in order to give attention to the tantrum. Sure. Outside of just like using your calm voice to assure her that you're still around Mm -hmm. but if she can like stop you in your tracks every time she throws Mm -hmm. a tantrum then that becomes a really useful tool and we would like a tantrum to be a very not useful tool yes to be very an inconvenient way for her to try and get what she wants in life that's good that makes sense um and then as always letting toddlers know what they can do because otherwise you're just in this world of like no got it don't don't do that don't climb on that don't Mm. this don't that as opposed Mm -hmm. to if you're standing on a table, put your feet on the ground mm. is different mm-hmm. from don't stand on that. That's right? really good. This yeah. is the instruction of what I would like for you. Like here are like reframing your language to say these are the expectations that you can mm. live up to. That's helpful. And you hit the nail on the head if you do this thing. Okay. So Rebecca has an almost 20-month-old, Chloe. And she said, hi, Jess and Lane. I already watched the first episode on YouTube and I loved it. Thank you. Hi, Rebecca. What are your thoughts on discipline for an almost 20 month old? Chloe doesn't act out too much, but we have put her in time out a couple times, but does she even understand it? It's a great question. I hear you. That's so confusing. Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, no, she does not understand it. So that's just, sometimes it's nice to have just like a really straightforward <laughs> Podcast answer. <is> over. <laughs> nope. See ya. <laughs> um, I, I just like it when people tell me the part that is like yeah. very concrete Crucial. Uh-huh. and then go ahead and give some context. So uh, no, there are different takes across the board on where and when timeouts are useful and appropriate um, for very young children that it doesn't make sense. Um, there is a role for like removal from the situation in a way that is connected to it. So really what you're doing with a 20 month old is there's no like good and bad for her. There's no right and wrong for her. That just doesn't make sense. She's Mm -hmm. so new to existing and she's just like really exploring her world. So what she's looking for are any ways that are successful to meet her needs. So what your job is to do is to um, show her what will be successful and what will be absolutely unsuccessful every Mm -hmm. single time. Oh, so interesting. I don't know what kinds of behavior you're experiencing, but um, gosh, I'm trying to think of an example. Yeah. Say, because Jules is a similar age, mm-hmm. a, a couple months older, but around that time we were seeing issues too. Maybe like snatching a toy from mm-hmm. a sibling or a family member or hitting or mm-hmm. losing their mind, crying, throwing a tantrum in yeah. a moment that 
is not they're not hungry they're not tired they're just upset yeah let's do those like playing with siblings playing with family members even playing with you rebecca as the the parent but like close interactions with your family members Mm -hmm. where there's like the snatching or the grabbing or the hitting or Mm -hmm. just those kinds of things that are like little and quick very impulsy trying to get what she wants Mm -hmm. um it's very important that she practices the feeling you practice the feeling of frustrating that for her Hmm. right if she's doing a lot of it mm -hmm. okay she's doing a lot of hitting 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 so like jules is like hitting wilson a bunch Mm because she wants the thing that he has i for me i like i'm a quick scoot you away like a bit and not that's not like big in a whole separate room kind of thing sure but it's a move you away from the thing so that you feel frustrated and absolutely can't have what you're trying for. Mm. And then the mentalizing of, I see that you really want that toy. I love that you're playing with us. Only people who treat each other with respect are going to be playing here right now. So if you want to be gentle, then you can come right back Mm. and you bring it back in. Mm -hmm. You show like demonstrating the gentle hands. Mm -hmm. You say what you do want her to do, which if you're seeing this is like really actually not discipline, it's training. Um, you're showing sure. her like, do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, nope. That was those harmful hands again. I'm going to scoot you away because I don't let anybody treat Wilson like this. I touch him gently and respectfully. Oh, that's really good. And if you're listening, I'm doing a lot of gesturing yeah. too mm-hmm. of like the moving yeah, her showing. little body that's out. super important. And then the touching gently. Would you like to come try? No. Okay. That's no problem. You can stay yeah. over there. As soon as you're ready to come back and play with us, you're very we're welcome. Do that. Oh, we're playing in this way. We're not playing in that way. But you're very welcome to come back as soon as you. Yeah. So it's like very quick and clear and connected to what's happening because all you're trying to do is give her successful tools Mm -hmm. right so that hopefully chloe will then just drop the unsuccessful ones Mm -hmm. because what she wants is the toy or to be close to you or to have the whatever right like she's just looking for the ways to get her needs met in life so make it really frustrating and unsuccessful which I also want to be very frank with you. Like, well, there will be reactions to that. Like you're going to get tantrums. Sometimes you're going to get some of those more negative reactions because she'll feel that frustration. Mm -hmm. But her underneath drive is not to just like do the wrong thing or give you bad behavior. It's to get the thing that she wants. Yeah. So in your relationship, you're creating, it's frustrating for these unsuccessful behaviors and it's really positive and immediate and sweet and good mm-hmm. for all of these successful behaviors. That makes a You're lot of sense. just getting her to dump the old tools and build the good ones. Yeah. Her situation is that she has three kids. Oh, by the way, she's not me. <laughs> but the kids Asking are- Asking for yeah. a friend. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's very important. <laughs> she has a two-year-old and a baby. Mm-hmm. The two-year-old gets love aggression, essentially, oh. is what it looks like. And it's very aggressive. Mm. And um, this mom, she is consistent. She is there at all times to separate them. But the little two-year-old girl to her little brother is pinching him, drawing blood, biting him, drawing blood. And it's now been weeks of this. So it's been really, uh, I mean, the mom, when I talked to her, she was tears in her eyes. Like, I don't know what else to do. I'm not sure what to try. Do you have tips for how to help a two-year-old handle that? Because it's it's coming from a place of love. Like it's not, it, it's very obvious that she's not upset at the little one. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be different if it was like that. What do you think? Yeah. So I do hope that the first thing would be to know that like that's just very real and very, very normal. Okay. That's very, very normal. My very first two pieces of advice for toddler parents, they all kind of start with this pattern mm-hmm. of first uh, sort of adult regulation. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is is data collection. A lot of toddler behavior and particularly that, it looks kind of scary. Mm-hmm. Like the visual mm-hmm. of it from and an adult sound. perspective. And the sound, the all crying. of a sudden the baby's screaming. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it feel it like raises those alarms inside mm-hmm. and it feels scary. And so, and so now you have this like precious two-year-old who was just your tiny little baby yes. who you you feel scared of them yes and that and then that feels that's weird there's like and you're this guilty real compound, yeah. yeah there's like real compound feelings so I just want to like acknowledge and hold those feelings because that part is actually kind of the most important part mm-hmm. is the adult being able to like place this correctly mm-hmm. inside of themselves so that she can respond so that she versus can, reacting yeah. is that right yeah okay. so that she can under like understand and know and decide what she wants mm-hmm. to do rather than being like super caught up in the in these very real big feelings um her her two-year-old is totally okay Mm. it's totally okay that that is happening and that that urge is happening okay and of course we're not going to let that behavior continue but that's yeah it's really it doesn't mean the child's unhealthy or Mm -hmm. something okay yeah Yeah. and she is she is right that the two-year-old doesn't want to hurt the baby Mm. that's like not the goal inside of this little person 
so just like hopefully like a little bit of relax in that mm-hmm. and then she she mom gets mm-hmm. to do what she needs to do in order to get herself some relief mm-hmm. if this has been happening for weeks and weeks on end mm-hmm. like it might be time to call somebody in mm-hmm. and like hand off mm-hmm. and even though it feels hard and yeah. you might feel guilty to be like i'm gonna go get coffee all by myself and just yeah. not be next to these two little people like mm-hmm. that might be the perfect thing right like a, really a well-regulated mom who's able to like be inside of herself and make choices is the absolute best thing Mm -hmm. for these two children as opposed to a mom who is running out of what she needs trying to just be there and be there and be there and be there yeah so taking care of herself is paramount yeah perfect um and then next to the data collection Mm -hmm. i think if she can spend some time just like really really not making any major changes Mm -hmm. to what she's doing or like focusing on trying to make this problem stop but just like really noticing what was happening before what was toddler doing what was i the mom doing Mm -hmm. like where where am i in the room when Mm -hmm. this thing happens how close is this to mealtime or bedtime mealtime or bedtime Mm -hmm. um was she previously playing with something else how long has it been since she's like run or jumped Mm -hmm. or like what kinds of things are her body Mm -hmm. doing just like really and if you can take notes i find it really helpful even if it's just like a quick little voice memo to myself it's interesting because it makes sense hearing this why you would start with the mom regulating herself Mm -hmm. because if you're feeling panicked taking a few days to collect data feels really freaky because you're like hold on i've been doing this for weeks now how am i supposed to let this continue i just need a quick solution but if she can be back into like no relax everything's fine you're doing such a good job as a mom this is really intense i'm sorry this is so hard okay everything's like sort of sorted out inside of her then she can be the observer who collects the data from a place of uh just maybe more peace good i'm glad that that makes sense Um, like likely solutions Mm -hmm. just to like throw a few out without I don't have data about this particular child so it's it's likely either that she does kind of need something whether it's like attention or food or snuggles or like maybe to just like have her own little body really squeezed or something or and I this one feels I just like in my 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 little bones this one feels a little bit more like it to me I think that the toddler might be needing some kind of sensory input Hmm. that goes along with her social interaction with the baby Mm. because it sounds like she's super excited. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we have that sort of like, that's so cute. I want to crush oh, it. I have Feel that like all the so time. bad. I, yeah. I literally, my husband showed me a video of our new, our brand new nephew this morning. Aww. And I was like, ah, look it, bite it, crush its face. Wow. <laughs> like, I love it so much. I just want to squeeze him. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, says like the girl feels. who's, who just told us. Oh, everybody wow. else's babies okay. are the best. Okay. So you still have that. It's just, okay. oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the urge is very real yes. and it exists in adults and we're all very familiar with that. Um, but for a two-year-old, they don't have a way to know, like, I need to squeeze something. Yeah. I need to bite something. I would really play into that for her. I mean, I would have in a calm and quiet moment, a little talk, me, me and toddler, hey, this thing keeps happening with baby. And mm. I know you know about it, but like, the squeezing and the scratching remember these little marks Mm. we got to make sure that this doesn't happen because i want you to be able to be with this baby and play with it Mm -hmm. and love it but i only let people touch my baby gently Mm. so i got you this and i would look for something that's maybe like those kind of like foam letters or blocks or even like um like the consistency of a makeup sponge i don't know what those are made out of so i might not pick that specifically but like a toy that has that kind of okay a vibe to it so that she can bite it so wow. there is something that's yes. Okay. Where it's like, when you feel this feeling, oh, here's your, you want to visit the baby? Mm-hmm. Let's go get your fun toy. Oh, so that there's something already in her hands that she can destroy if she needs Whoa. to. Like that feeling of digging your fingernails into something or like that biting feeling. Like it may be that she just like really needs to have that input as she processes this feeling and then practices the social interaction as opposed to it just being this huge no. You have to laugh and call it science or feel frustrated or mad or something or mm-hmm. sad or I, as much as you can laugh and recognize science in it it's so much easier because every day is messes at mm-hmm. least in my home in this stage yeah 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 the example that this teacher used in this class which i still remember from mm-hmm. like nine years ago is she was talking about dumping like the the constant and endless toddler habit of whatever container is full of whatever the smaller the pieces the better yeah just they just want to pick up the container and dump it usually away from their bodies straight onto the ground 
Yeah. Maybe shake it a little bit to see if any extra Legos will come out. No, this was my bedtime last night. We had just cleaned Wilson and Eloise's room and Jules came in and took a bin of tiny little car pieces that Mm -hmm. Wilson uses to build and dumps them upside down right at bedtime. And I yelled, I've been defeated. I've been (laughs) defeated, Sean. (laughs) I was like, I need you. I'm defeated. (laughs) And then he had to come in and tap in because yeah. I was like, nope, can't, can't. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> when he just put her little naked body over in her room and got her ready for bed. I was like, this Perfect. is the thing Lane talks about. I'm, yeah. I'm so lucky, guys. You need to listen to Lane every week because it really <laughs> does shape the moments when you're being defeated into like, I can laugh and like have a glass of wine or something versus mm-hmm. I'm going to cry and yeah. run away. <laughs> well, my hope is that it keeps it in the realm of like people stuff. Oh yeah. You're like these are people that I'm in a relationship yeah, with and totally. this is like the key thing this we're talking about today is like learning. they're doing something mm-hmm. as opposed to being like I'm a person with these monsters that I made and adore mm-hmm. and I think they're the best thing in the whole world and also they're attacking me and attacking mm-hmm. my life all the time. Totally. Or like I I have an agenda as a mom, as a woman, as mm-hmm. a person, I have this agenda and if I don't honor that these are people with agendas too, then they are just sort of a nuisance. They're, mm-hmm. they're really slowing down my agenda. They're making this clean house messy or they're making this hummus have orange juice in it. Versus like, she's a person, I'm a person, she's experimenting, I'm living my life. I, I've already experimented. So I actually went through that same mm-hmm. stage of life too. And um, and you're right, you love these little monsters. You love, love, love them. So this is a way to tap into that love and really understand them and honor them as yeah. little little guys who are doing great work. Mm-hmm. And something that you just said there, which is that you already know because you already did that stage. Mm. That's what the teacher was saying about the dumping is oh. for me, I look at a bucket of Legos and I'm like, those are for putting the blocks together and creating something new Yeah, because I already know what they're for. I've already used them that way. Right. The child who is dumping is like, whoa, bucket, mm. pumped on the bucket. Whoa, there's little stuff inside. And then when they move it the first time, they hear that sound of the Legos. Sh- 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 for the first time ever. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, that sound is amazing. How much more of that sound can I make? Like this is them doing the science of finding out like, what is this? What is this world? Knocking on it. What kind mm. of sound is it? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? Whoa, can I do that more? Which is what the next question that they always ask out of everything mm-hmm. ever. Oh, can I do that more? Totally. Can there be more paint? Can that be louder? Can I get higher? Can it yeah. be more water? Can it be wetter? Can it be colder? Right. Everything is more always. So the dumping out of this is like the ratcheting up of the experiment. Like what is the maximum of this? Or sometimes they dump it on themselves. Like let me feel all these pieces come yeah. down and like brush down my face and body and some of them are hard. They've never stepped on a Lego before. Right. I know that they're about to cry yeah. because they've dumped everything out and now there's nothing left to do except for stand on it, which is going to hurt. But they don't because they haven't yet stood on it right. and found out that it's going to hurt. They don't yeah. know that the pieces go together until you do that thing. So they're doing this early work of science that looks to me like mm-hmm. nonsense and mess and mayhem. I'm like, why can't you just do it right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, confused, like standing there looking at me like, what? Because yeah. they don't know what's in my mind. Yeah, and I didn't know what was in my mind or the adult mind when I was that age. Totally. Dumping out those Legos. Something that you and I have never talked about, but something I see in calls and something I feel with jewels specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- there are some of us, some mothers, who feel that from birth – we did not properly bond with our babies. Oh, interesting. It may not actually be true. It's more like it's a fear Mm -hmm. because maybe our babies were born via C-section. We didn't expect it. Maybe they were immediately taken to the NICU, which is where my thing is with Jules. And she was there for almost a month. um, And I wasn't able to be there all the time Mm -hmm. because I was with Wilson a lot. So I would go and spend certain parts of the day with her, but it was not much. And Sean spent more time at the NICU than me. And so, um, but I've heard variations of this. One, one mom described that like her baby was born. She went to the bathroom and she came back in the room and her mother-in-law was holding the baby as the first arms that held the baby. Panic. That sends panic through my yeah, body. Yeah. Yeah. Or like for, for Jules and I, I'll speak to that. There's, there's this feeling in me that I may have failed her, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, like I I didn't mean to fail her and I don't even have conclusive evidence that I failed her. But yeah. there's this sense that like she had to be without me for so long and she wasn't in my arms for so long. And so then the way that 
plays out sometimes is now as this really beautifully independent two-year-old, she's more independent than my other two kids. And I want to celebrate it as like, this is so cool. She'll probably be president one day (laughs) because she for sure is a leader, not a follower. Um, But at the same time, there's like, at the same time, there's like a a tinge and a tinge, a little like pang of, well, is she actually just not very bonded with you? Like, Mm. is she actually pushing back this hard? Because you who were supposed to be Mm. there, um, weren't there and yeah the reason why I bring it up is because that that can be something that can be very confusing when I'm in a situation where I want to have a boundary that makes sense like no babe like we don't hit or we don't we don't talk to mom like that we Mm -hmm. don't talk to mom like that that's not how we do this kind of what you say like that's a tool that doesn't work but there's kind of this backwards voice somewhere back there of like well, you know, like maybe somehow by me bending over backwards for her, it's like an, my effort to restore the bond or like yeah. my attempt to not further divide us mm-hmm. if if by chance there is a divide. Yeah. <laughs> which I don't even know if there is. <laughs> I could just be dealing with a two-year-old who's very independent. Um, the comfort I found is that I'm not alone in that. Like yeah. in our community where we lead these weekly calls, I've heard from many moms some version of like, I don't know if I if if I if I bonded with my baby right away, if I did the thing I was supposed to do. There's a lot of pressure to bond, but then there's a lot of ambiguity around mm-hmm. what the heck does bonding mean? Mm-hmm. Um, to the point where you get moms months into motherhood who tell us I still feel like there's a bit of a disconnect. Like I feel like I'm holding this baby. I love this baby, but I haven't really internalized that this is my baby. There's still some disassociation there. And so then they can feel like, oh gosh, am I not bonded? Um, What I can tell them easily is you're totally normal. Everything's fine. (laughs) But when it's yourself, you end up crying on a podcast (laughs) because it's a lot more intense. So, yeah, so yeah. intense, so tender. So it's tender. Such a tender thing inside and such yeah. a, it's very precious in that way. Yeah. You know, yeah, very, very is. important. Totally. Like, what a question to have. Yeah, inside. and it can make it can make something like this more complicated mm-hmm. than it even needs to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I love what you say about like modeling a boundary for them. Like mm-hmm. you're having a boundary and instead of viewing it as this thing that's dividing us or making them protest, almost like, look what you've done to them. Right. It's like, okay, show them by by having a boundary, show them what it means to value themselves as mm-hmm. a person so that down the road, they too are able to operate in boundaries. Yeah. So teach us how. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. This is about having a self Mm -hmm. and you have a self and they have a self, whether or not either one of you wants to acknowledge that. Yeah. No matter what has happened in your relationship from the very beginning to the very end, like you exist Mm -hmm. as a person and you have a shape Mm -hmm. and yourself is important and valuable. Yeah. And what you are getting to show your child in holding your own shape and valuing your own self and showing yourself to them Mm -hmm. is you're getting to show them like, yes, how to do that for themselves, which we should talk a lot about because that's so motivating, but also you acknowledging that you exist and that you are a self and have a self and take up space in your relationship is the only way to have a real relationship with yeah. them. For you to sense. endlessly be emptying yourself away and trying to make more and more and more space for Jules, you're actually retreating from a relationship with yeah. her because yourself is leaving mm-hmm. in order to make more space for her. And for her, she's still an amorphous mm-hmm. concept. So she's basically just stirring up tornado because there's space and then there keeps being more space. So she's just going to fill it with, I don't know, yeah. right? Rather than right. you being like, Whoo, here I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am your mother and I have density and valence yeah. and my body is made out of matter and it matters. That. Totally. And I I'm that. here for you. And I do want to bond with you mm. in your life in whatever way that works for us. I'm not leaving. Mm. Like the wholeness of me is here. That's beautiful. This is how it gets to be treated. 
this is what it deserves. Mm -hmm. This is what it can do for you. Mm -hmm. It's amazing me. Yeah. It's amazing my body. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally. amazing my thoughts and my needs. They're wonderful mm -hmm. and they get filled and yours get filled and we go back and forth and each of us takes up the correct amount of space mm -hmm. and I actually do things with you when I actually enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Not whenever you feel like it. I actually do the things that I can for you and then when I can't or when I choose not to, I don't. And now you can trust that when I say yes, it means something. And okay. when I say no, it means something. This is a relationship, right? Yeah. And it creates so much safety if that's true. Mm -hmm. If the person you're in a relationship with says what they mean and does what they say. 